today I want to use as a subtopic the search. The search. As we stay under that theme for the month, the search. Um, in 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 uh, First Samuel chapter thirteen and verse fourteen. First Samuel thirteen verse fourteen. The Bible reads that, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be prince or leader over his people. Because you have not kept what the Lord commanded. I'll read it again from the ESV. But now your kingdom shall not continue. Your reign, your assignment, that which you have been set over shall not continue. It shall come to an end. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be prince or leader. Over his people. Who is people? Israel. Because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Now, who is speaking in this text is the prophet Samuel is speaking here. And who is he speaking to is King Saul. The first king of Israel. That God had selected himself to be king. God selected Saul to be king. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. And when we read later on in the New Testament when Paul was describing um, um, his um, credential, listing his credentials... He listed that, he noted that he himself was from the tribe of Benjamin. Why he said that? Because the first who? Was from the tribe of Benjamin. So that was a very special thing. Amen. King Saul started off pretty well. Doing God, what God had commanded him to do. The prophet was God's mouthpiece. Amen. And the prophet would say what the, would relate to King Saul what God said. Samuel. You remember Samuel being called just at the tender age of eight? Just a little lad. God can call anybody. Use anybody. Appoint anyone. And assign anyone. Amen. For it's not by might nor by power. But by the spirit of the Lord. And it's the same spirit who works in the adult will work in the child. King Saul started off pretty well. But as we read in the, in the scriptures that he started to drift. He started to get sidetracked. He started to get distracted. He started to give in more to the people he was serving than the God who called him to serve. Amen. And it's a dangerous thing when you start to listen more to those who you are called to serve than him who has called you to serve. Amen. Now. And King Saul started to Give in to the demands and the pressure and the suggestions and the opinions of the people in opposed to the command of God. Who will you obey, man or God? Those you are serving are him who called you to serve. Those you are serving. King Saul was eventually rejected by God. It's a dangerous thing to be rejected by God. 
It's a dangerous thing to be left alone by God. When God turns someone over to themselves, that's the worst state. That's the worst state a person can ever be in. Amen. When the Spirit of God stop pulling at that person's heart, that's a dangerous spot to be in. You see, I'm glad that God still convicts me. Amen. I said, I'm glad I still get convicted. I am glad when the Holy Spirit still corrects me. Because it tells me that he has not forsaken me or abandoned me. He's still working on me. God has not left me alone. So whenever you feel convicted by the Holy Spirit, consider it a blessing to know that the presence of God has not forsaken you, has not left you. Amen, somebody. It's the worst state to be in when God turns away from a person. King Saul fell into that category. God rejected the first king. God's appointed became God's rejected. Think about that. And the Lord sent a word with the prophet Samuel, who, by the way, loved King Saul. He loved him. Because if you read the scriptures, Samuel was mourning, crying. We'll say bawling for Saul. His heart was sorrowful that God had rejected him. But God sent a message with the prophet to the king who was now rejected and said, But now your kingdom, your reign, your rule, your assignment, that which you have been set over shall not continue. In other words, it shall come to an end. That which I've called you to be over, I've taken it back from you. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him, the man, to be prince or leader over his people. Because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Notice this, the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. So that tells us that King Saul was no longer searching out God's heart. He was no longer pursuing the heart of God. He was now pursuing his own ambitions and that of the people. And whenever we stop pursuing God's heart, and start pursuing our, our own ambitions and, and that of other people. Listen, we are setting, up our, setting ourselves up for failure. For God to say, I will seek a man after my own heart, tells us that King Saul was no longer seek, seeking after God's heart. He, did, he was no longer seeking to hear what God was passionate about. What God desires were to be fulfilled. There was a reversal that took place. In opposed to seeking God's heart, he was now seeking his own ambitions and that of the people around him. And God rejected King Saul. Took the kingdom from him and gave it to another man. Somebody shout another man. A man who was after God's own heart. King Saul lost all he had because his heart drifted in the wrong direction. Those who God will use to do great exploits are those who are seeking after God's heart. If we seek after his heart, he will cause us and use us to do great exploits in his name. The King Saul's heart drifted, started to drift in the wrong direction. Even when he was corrected, he still went back and did that which was wrong in the eyes 
of the Lord. We know who this man was that God had appointed and sought out. His name is David, as you know. David, the Bible let us know, was a man after God's own heart. Glory to God. And in Psalm 139, verse 23 through 24, David wrote a powerful, a powerful scripture here. David said, in Psalm 139, by the way, he started talking about how God knows everything about him. And how God formed him and knitted him and put him all together. When we read verses 13 through 16, David, David spoke about how God put him all together and that God saw his inward parts and God knew him in the dark and God knit him, knitted him together and he knew everything about him. He, he, his frame was not hidden from him. David spoke about all of this. But when David got down to verses 23 and 24, but of course, you know, there weren't verses then. But when we get down to verses 23 and 24, David said something very profound. I shared this a couple weeks ago. Um, Pastor Karen and I have the, have the, had the privilege of um, sharing at a, a marriage breakfast at um, one of my cousin's ministry in Fort Lauderdale Gateway Church. And I share the scripture, and I want to I want to go over, I want to bring it here today as we talk about the search. Because we're talking about a work of heart. And David, David um, said something very profound in verses 23 and 24. After David spoke about how God knew him and everything and that God put him together, David got down and he said, search. Somebody shout the search. He said, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Somebody shout, know my heart. He said, try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting that's the King James version the, the ESV reads search me O God and know my heart try me and know my thoughts and see God look if if there be any grievous way grievous way grievous ways that would cause that would, would be grievous against your will, against your, against your word, against your commandment. Anything that would grieve you. See if there's anything in, you, in me that would grieve you and lead me in the way everlasting. David. And as I said at the conference, I said, I found this to be so interesting. Because David is asking the Lord to search him. He said, search my heart and try my thoughts. Somebody shout, heart, heart, thoughts. Now the heart has to do with the motives, the passions, the desires, the emotions. The heart, motives, passions, desires. The thoughts has to do with the plans in our mind. All the plans that are we got in our mind, we are thinking about. All the ideas, all the imaginations. He said to search them all. <laughs> Somebody shout the search. He said to search my heart, search my motives. Because how many understand that even as believers, sometimes we do things with the wrong motive? Hello. Let the church say amen. Even as believers, child of God, Holy Ghost, fill and all, we do things with the wrong motive behind it. So he said, search my heart where the motives are, where my passions, search out my passions. 
What is it that I'm passionate about? Am I more passionate about things that are not of you? What, what, what am I passionate? What am I driven by? Search out my passions. Search out my desires. Amen. What are the, what are the desires that I've harbored in my heart? What are the desires that I hold so dear? Search them out, God. I want to make sure that I'm not holding anything that is grievous to you. Somebody shout, a work of heart. Work of heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So David said, um, search my motives, my passions, my desires. And not only that, like, try my thoughts, try my plans and my ideas that I'm walking around in, within my head. Try them. Try them. Um, well, I found the scripture to be very intriguing because how can we ask the Lord who knows everything to search us? How can we ask the Lord who knows everything to search us? Am I now? You still with me? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> How, how can we ask the Lord who knows everything to search us? I mean, in the previous verses, David said, you know everything about me. You know, you knitted me together. You formed my inward parts. He was going on and on on how the Lord knew him. Ain't that what he read? But then he came down to the end of the psalm. And he's still saying, search me. <laughs> How can we ask the Lord who knows? Do you believe God knows everything? Well, how can we ask the Lord who knows everything to search us? Doesn't he already know what's inside of us? Doesn't he already know what we're like? Doesn't he already know? Our thoughts from a distance, the Bible said. Before we even got the thought, he saw it coming. Amen now. The Bible said he knows my thoughts from a distance. So if God knows everything, why? Why is David said, search me again, Lord? What's really important that I want to bring to be on the walls today as we're in this A Work of Heart series. What's really important here is not just God searching the man. But rather, listen to this, don't miss it. But rather the willingness of the man to be searched. Hello now. Awesome. <laughs> It's not so much God searching you because he already knows what you're like. But it's the willingness of the person to be searched. You know when you're traveling, anybody um, travel lately? Um, by, by air? All right, say a hand there. There you go. You know, you know it's, it's a thing now. You can't, you can't just go well, walking up on the few folks playing like, they don't know what you got. <laughs> Amen. And I'm glad they search us because I don't know what the other person got either. Am I now? And you know sometimes we get all tired and frustrated like, man, this long search and stuff. Well, thank God for the search. Glory to God. Because you got some crazy jokers out there that want to get on the plane with something. I don't know about you, but I want to get to where I want to get to. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So they're searching you on the they're searching you before you go on the plane. They, you empty out your pockets, you're taking off your shoe. Some folks start to wear loose shoes, so it's just easy to take it off now. <laughs> they're searching their head and everything too. <laughs> and they're scanning you, you're going through the scanner, the body scanner. Ain't that so? They want to make sure that you're good to fly in this plane, that you ain't coming up here with nothing and any kind of secret stuff hidden stuff amen and the thing about it you can't get on the plane if you refuse to be searched 
Amen. First of all, it's not your plane. <laughs> if you had a private jet and everything, ain't nobody need to search you. But because we're not there yet, right, Sister Mary? We're not there yet. Glory to God. So because it's not your plane, you have to abide by the laws. You have to be searched whether you, listen, whether we like it or not. If we want to get to where we're going, listen, we have to be what? If, we, listen, if we're going to get to our destination, we got to be? Let me say that one more time. If we're going to get to our destination, we got to be? So it's not so much God searching the man because God already knows everything that was in David. But it's rather the willingness of David to be searched. Amen. Anybody got into this today? It's rather the what? The willingness. Somebody shout the willingness. The willingness, the willingness of the man to be searched. <laughs> What's important is we being willing to be searched out by God. Hallelujah. Yes. And willing to hear what his findings are. It's being willing to have God search our hearts and then to hear what he, what he found. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Because sometimes we don't really want to hear what he found in us. Dun, 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 dun. Hello. Sometimes we don't want to hear what God found. So we stay distracted. We keep busy. We don't want the Holy Spirit whisper to us. Call us out. I said, this is what I found in the search. You got a little bit of... <laughs> why y'all why y'all look, look, looking funny at me I said the Holy Ghost say I found a little bit of a little bit of this and a little bit of that Lord but here we are trying to stay busy praise the Lord hallelujah I'm going to read the scripture today here we are trying to post all scriptures on social media trying to stay busy when the Lord is trying to get our attention as to what he found <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. What's important is we being willing to be searched out by God and be willing to hear what are his findings. Listen, three potential findings of the Lord when he searches out. One, things we did not know were there. Things that we did not know were there. We did not know we had that in the heart. Hello, somebody. We had no idea that that was inside of us. Three potential findings of the Lord when we are willing to be searched. Because not everybody is willing to be searched. Not every believer is willing to be searched out intimately by God. Am I now? But, but there are three potential findings of the Lord when he searches us. Number one, things he will find that we did not know were even there. <laughs> you know, there's some stuff in our hearts sometimes we don't know. We didn't even know it was there. But thank God for the Holy Spirit who knows all things. Where deep calls unto deep. Uh -huh. And he searches out the depths of our heart. And he pulls up and he brings out the findings. And we say, oh Lord, I didn't 
even though I was like that. I didn't even know I was like that. I saw other people like that, but I didn't know I was like that. <laughs> Here's another potential finding that the Lord will, 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 will bring to our attention. Things that we deny being there. Things that we deny being there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, one. <laughs> that one that we say, oh no, I'm not like that. No, please. I know, I know I got a cousin like that. I got a, I got a first or second cousin. They're like that. But, but not me. <laughs> not me. I'm not like that. Even when your even when your spouse told you you're like that, you're like, oh no. Come on. Uh -uh, not me. My Lord. Things that we what? Deny yes. being there. My Lord. <laughs> Number three. Things we inherited from our bloodline being the heart. Hello now. Am I talking to us today? Yes, sir. Things that we have inherited, things that have passed down, that is in the heart from generation to generation. Great, great grandpa and grandma and all of them had it and it kept passing down through the bloodline and we inherited it and didn't even know that it was in us. But the Holy Ghost searches the depths of the heart and said, boy, you got to, this got to come out. This is coming from three, four, five, six generations back. And if you don't deal with it now, it's going to pass through the bloodline to the next generation. Somebody shall thank God for the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, I'm willing to be searched by God. Listen to this. Being open enough with God and showing that we are willing to be changed. We got to be open enough with God and show that we are what? Willing to be changed. Don't use your Christianity to, to cover up your habits. Come on. Say it again, Pastor. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, don't use your Christianity to cover up your habits. Glory to God, your bad habits. The habits that are holding you back. The habits that is ruining fellowship. Hello, somebody. The habits that is blocking the channel between you and God. Don't use your Christianity to cover up the bad habits that God wants to remove from your life. Somebody shall preach past them all. We got to be open enough with God and showing that we are willing to be changed. And that's what David did. He said, God, search me. He said, search me. He said, I'm willing to be searched. I know I, I got to be vulnerable. I got to be open. I gotta be transparent, but I'm willing to be searched because you know my heart more than I do. You know, you'll find some stuff that I didn't know was there. You'll find some stuff that I denied being there, and you're gonna find some stuff that I've, that I've inherited from my bloodline. We are willing when we are open to be searched by God. We are willing to be searched by his Holy Spirit. Willing to be searched by the Spirit of God who resides in our spirit. Listen to this. My willingness to be searched by God is an indication that I'm willing to be changed. My willingness to be searched by him is an indication to him that I'm willing to be changed. God can't change anyone. Who don't want to be changed because he won't bend your will he won't manipulate you am I now we got to be willing to be changed so we said God bring the search on somebody shall bring the search on 
And when I'm changed by God, my life will be at a better place. Hello. It's only to my own advantage when I'm changed by God. It's only to my advantage. So why wouldn't I want to be changed by him? Why wouldn't I welcome the search? Invi invite him to search. So we invite him through prior. We invite him to search us and reveal to us anything that poses a threat to his plan in our lives. Anything that what poses a threat to his plan in our lives and for our lives. Anything that poses a threat to God's plan in our life. We are inviting God to search us. We are being transparent and vulnerable. And we are saying, God, I'm willing to be searched. I want you to do a work in my heart. Because I want you to remove every possible threat to what you want to do through me. Four potential, real quickly. We're making good time. Real quickly, four potential threats of an unchecked heart. Four potential, potential threats of an unchecked heart. You know, when, you know, anyone still uses a desktop computer? A desktop computer? Not a laptop, a desktop. Anyone use a desktop? Oh, y'all, you, you got a desktop? Uh huh, I, I do too. See, Mike, everybody has got laptops. At work, right? You, you use desktop at work? Okay. Okay. All right. I have a desktop at home, and I'll, I'll always have a desktop. In fact, I need a new desktop, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a desktop. I've been, Dell, I, I like Dell. They proved to be good for years. And, and um, you know, almost every time I got a desktop, it will, and it will happen to not just desktop, but laptops too. Um, you will see a little pop-up, you know, from a software, an anti-spam software, anti-virus software, software that will say, um, it has, it has um, conducted a test, right, a search, and found no threats, no potential threats. Anybody ever seen that pop-up on your computer? Uh-huh, right. Um, so what it does is periodically the computer, the software, it's programmed to, to, to conduct this, this test run, this, this search, searching out any po potential, po if I can get the word out, potential threat, right? And, and it will find, if it finds any virus, anything that poses a threat to your, your computer, it will remove it, right? Or it will, it will hold it and, 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 and notify you so you can remove it. Right? Listen, there are four potential threats of an unchecked heart that, that we want to look at real quickly before I close off here today. Number one, um, a threat, an unchecked heart, can pose a threat to our relationships. In this love month, an unchecked heart can pose a threat to our relationships right because what we're saying is god search my heart i'm willing to be searched and and when 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 i open up myself to be searched when i when i release myself and become very transparent in your presence lord show me what your findings are and and, and listen what we got to do is we got to be willing to receive god's findings because sometimes the Lord will reveal some stuff that, that's in our heart that poses what? A threat to our relationship. Am I now? And some, sometimes we know it's there. Sometimes we deny it. And sometimes we don't even know it's there. And the Holy Spirit is saying this poses a threat to not just your relationship between your spouse, but your relationship between other family members and people in general. Amen. So there are some, there are things in our heart, if we're not careful, that will pose a threat to our relationships. And this is why we need God to search us. This is why we got to welcome the search. 
We got to be willing to be searched by God. That he can identify those viruses that don't belong there. Because they pose a threat to our relationship. And God is saying you got to deal with this. You got to deal with this virus. You got to deal with this issue. This poses a threat. If you don't deal with it, things are going to start falling apart. Am I now? And so, and so one of the potential threats of an unchecked heart is a threat to our very relationships. Even as parents, as parents, our hearts need to be checked by God because there are some stuff in our hearts that we inherited too. Amen? That can ruin the relationship with our kids. Amen now. And we've been going and thinking that's the way it should be done. When the Holy Spirit is saying, no, that's just been passed down. <laughs> Somebody shout glory. So number one, a pot potential, potential threat to our, um, our relationships. Number two, another potential threat of an unchecked heart is um, a threat to our purpose and assignment. A threat to our purpose and our assignment. A threat to what? Or we read we read the text earlier. What happened to King Saul? What happened to his assignment? What happened to his purpose? Because his heart drifted away from God. Hello, his purpose came to an end. His assignment was ended because his heart went into the wrong direction. Come on now. So when we go with an unchecked heart. We are only sabotaging our purpose and our, our assignment. Because if we're not careful, there are things in our heart that can mess up our purpose. Mess up our assignment. Mess up what God has called us to do. And God is saying, I got to check your heart. Because what I've set you over is holy. is consecrated. He's set apart. And I got to make sure if you will allow me, I will identify those things in your heart that will sabotage the assignment on your life. We see it all the time. Great folks doing mighty works in the kingdom. And what happened? A fall. A fall. Hello? Am I talking the truth or am I talking the truth? They fall. Listen, so what we got to do? We got to learn from these things. I said, God, search my heart. And you know, sometimes when God search your heart, it's painful. <laughs> Can I get a witness in the house? I said, when God searches your heart, it's painful. Because our little ego don't, don't want to believe that we could be like that. We don't want to believe that I could be that wicked. Oh my God. <laughs> Are we here praying and going on and whatnot and the Lord found some bitterness in the heart? The Lord found some unforgiveness in the heart. And we be like, Lord, Lord, I forgive everybody. I forgive everybody. But you still feel funny when you see that. <laughs> and you don't like to hear them talk. That's an indication that something is still. Something is still there. And the Holy Ghost said, just allow me to search it out and reveal it and remove it and if you're willing to be changed I'll change you because listen I don't want anything to mess up God's assignment for my life somebody shall take it out Jesus 
Whatever is in my heart that should not be there, take it out. Holy Ghost, take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Perform surgery on me and remove it so that I can be all that you have called me to be. Another poten potential, potential, potential threat, uh -huh, thank you, is a threat to your ministry in the body of Christ. A threat to your ministry in the body of, of Christ. I maybe need some water. Let me drink some. You all say something while I drink this. Let me see if I can get that word potential now. Glory to God. A threat to the ministry, your ministry in the body of Christ. Because when we're in the body serving, if our heart are not in the right place, amen, we'll abuse and beat up on folk and take out personal issue on people. In opposed to doing what God has called us to do. To serve one another in love. Y'all let me talk a little bit. I'm almost done. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when we're serving, we got to serve the Lord with gladness. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Feel something. And this is why we got we to have our hearts searched out. Because when he has called us and placed us in the body to serve, we want to serve with a pure heart. We want to serve with a tender heart. Hallelujah. A compassionate heart. Amen. A humble heart. A humble. Somebody shout, humble heart. Uh huh. Yeah, no. yeah I, I, I'm tired. You know what I'm tired of seeing? I'm tired of seeing the, in the body of Christ these folks. Hello, hello. Why is it now? <laughs> Somebody shout, Lord, I want a heart of humility. Even Jesus wrapped an apron around him and went down and washed the feet of his disciples. And they, you got some in the body of Christ, they can't even shake your hand. They can't even shake your hand. I said, they can't even shake your hand. When Jesus washing feet, you can't shake hands? Somebody shall search me on God. Jesus washing feet, we can't shake hands. Ain't that something? An unchecked heart will is a potential threat to your ministry in the body of Christ. Because you'll do stuff for the wrong reason, the wrong motive. With the wrong spirit behind it. Amen. Number four, last one. A potential threat. <laughs> a potential threat to, 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 to um, of an unchecked heart is a threat to the anointing on your life. The anointing on your life. The anointing is the supernatural power of God operating in our lives that enables us to do what we could not do in the natural, in natural strength and natural power. The anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing empowers. The anointing makes ministry effective. And when we have an unchecked heart, it becomes a potential threat to the anointing in our lives and up in our lives. I don't know about you, but I don't want anything to be a threat to the anointing upon my life. Because outside of the anointing, it's just flesh. Outside of the anointing, 
it's just human strength outside of the anointing it's just my wisdom but the anointing of the Holy Spirit breaks the yoke breaks the yoke and set the captain free the anointing will get demons running the anointing will break every yoke that the enemy has tried to place over your life the anointing is power even Jesus was anointed I said even Jesus was anointed how can we live without the anointing how can we serve God without the anointing how can we do ministry without the anointing when even Jesus himself was anointed somebody shall search me God see if there be anything in me that will stop your anointing on my life I need I need I need I need I need I need the anointing does anybody need the anointing of the Holy Ghost somebody jump on your feet and give God a praise I need it 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 when I go to sleep I want to be anointed when I get up I want to be anointed when I go in my car I want to be anointed when I go on the job I want to be anointed when I serve in the church I want to be anointed when I uh, hey, hey. I want to I want to I want to Search me, Jesus. Search me, Jesus. Cleanse my heart, Jesus. Cleanse my heart. Purify my heart. Let the anointing flow. Let the anointing flow. Let the anointing flow. Let the anointed flow. Let the anointed flow. Let the anointed flow. Let the anointed flow. I am willing to present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto thee, which is my reasonable service. I am willing to present my heart to be searched by the Holy Ghost whatever you find that is not of you remove it from me i don't want it to stop my blessing i don't want it to ruin my relationship i don't want it to destroy my marriage i don't want it i don't want search me search me search me Holy Ghost, flow Holy Ghost, move Spirit of God, move with your power, move with your might, move Holy Spirit, move upon our hearts, move upon our hearts and remove every bitterness, remove every pride, remove every fear, remove every unforgiveness, Remove the anger. Remove the backbiting. Remove. 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 Remove.
Search me, search me. Search me, search me, search me. Search me, search me, search me. Search me, Lord, search me. Search me, Lord. Break of the yoke. Break of the feather. Break it up. Sets us. We lay it aside today. And we say, Search us, Lord. Search us. We're willing. We're willing. We're willing to be searched. And we're willing to hear your findings. We're willing to be changed. 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 Right. 